Okay, so today we're going to be reviewing the uh, Carson Microflip Microscope. It's a 100 to 250 high power microscope is what they have. It's a pocket microscope labeled by them. You can see the uh, magnifications there, 100 to 250x magnification, LED lighting, UV flashlight, uh, smartphone adapt clip. It's supposed to come with all sorts of features. And you look at the image in there, it's a very clear image of frog blood. Uh, they may not pick it up on my camera, but on the packaging it has a very clear image. So I'm kind of skeptical about that. Uh, this uh, this microscope was fifteen dollars off of Amazon, so I don't really have high hopes for this. I just want to see if it was worth the money of what I paid for it. So let's go ahead and get into this thing. So I have a uh, <clears throat> I have the uh, phone clip right here. It's, it comes in a little paper. I'm sorry, a little plastic bag. That's the phone clip that you clip to your camera, uh, and then that clips to the microscope. So it doesn't work out that well. The spring's really stiff on it, but it, it probably should be a little bit stiffer. I have a uh, iPhone 11, and I noticed that uh, the, it, the the images was just coming in and out, and it was really hard to stabilize it, and you couldn't just set the microscope down. So it's something that they can improve there. So pulling out the microscope, it's coming out in this little plastic bag, and it comes with this lanyard on it. Um, <clears throat> I'm not really all about the lanyard, so I went ahead and removed it. Uh, but you can see there it has UV. It's got a little slide dial for 100x and that uh, coarse and fine adjustment that just is labeled focus. Uh, so that's kind of what you would use. It goes all the way up to a 250x, and you see the LED button there. And it's made in China. Uh, I took that sticker off. I just don't like stickers on products. Um, so I went ahead and removed that. This, uh, this microscope operates off of a uh, <clears throat> AA battery. And so, uh, so I had a little AA battery from, uh, from a little case that I bought specifically for this microscope from Amazon. I'll have that link down in the description. Uh, but it's a it's a pretty good case. There are some issues with it, but we'll see that later. So right now I'm just fishing out the little AA battery that I have inside there. I really like that case. It's very small, compact. Um, it's pretty it's a pretty good case. If you hear some background noise, it's because I'm at my university, and of course there's uh, plenty of things going on. So so that's that lanyard. I removed it because I'm going to be carrying it in the case. So there's no reason for me to have that lanyard on there. There's already one on the case. So. I would just went ahead and removed that lanyard. Okay, so we get a second look at it there. You see the UV button on there, and uh, it can't be turned on while the slide base is down. It has to be flipped out of the way in order for in, in order for you to be able to use that UV. Then the LED light, it's able to be used in, with the slide base down and open. And you can see those little, I guess, light, uh, light refractors that would change the direction of the light to put it underneath the, uh, underneath the microscope slide. And that, that uh, focus has a little bit of play in it. And what I notice in the images that we'll see you later, uh, that we'll <laughs> see you later, uh, that we'll see later is that uh, the image has a tendency of moving with that focus knob, which I'm not a fan of. But yeah, fairly clear optics. It uh, doesn't seem like they're using completely low quality optics. Um, but everything, you know, the ocular lens, it, it's kind of hard to use because of how small it is and the way you have to hold it. But okay, so. Here we're setting it up to look at a slide. I have a couple of pre-made slides uh, and one prepared slide. Some of them I just made myself. So the clip just snaps in and it's fairly steady. You can still twist it and put the phone on it. But uh, of course I'm recording with the phone so I can't show you um, how unsteady it is. I wish I could, but unfortunately I can't. So uh, once again, I'm just reaching into this case to in that case, it's an $8 case or $11 case. Uh, I didn't pay too much for that case, so I don't have too, too much high hopes for it. But uh, you can see it's a, pretty, it's a pretty good case. It has a little zippered pouch there and, uh, and a couple of places, I'm assuming, to put the cover slips. So I'll put a link down in the description. And it can actually fit quite a bit of stuff. I can fit all those slides, those tweezers, and the pipette all now. 
I did have to cut that pipette down, uh, but it does fit into there. So right there, we're going to be looking at uh, onion root tip, right? So a lot of cells in there are performing mitosis. And uh, unspecified pollen grains that I just pulled off of some flour uh, a couple of days ago. And then a finch feather that I also uh, prepared now. I prepared these slides just by throwing some tape across the top of it because I didn't want to try to find a cover glass and, and use the uh, correct compound and wait six weeks for it to dry and all sorts of issues. So I just went ahead and just threw some tape on top of it and it works for temporary purposes. So we're going to start off with looking at the feather and uh, we're going to clip in here and try to get everything focused up. So this is the imaging that we get out of it. It's uh, fairly blue. I don't know why it came out that color. Uh, in real life, it, it's more white than it is blue, but uh, you can see that it focuses on the lowest power. It focuses fairly well. Um, it's hard to keep it in focus. You can see it going in and out of focus at zooming into 250 power. It's hard to keep it in and out of focus because of the plastic base that I will show you at the later of the video. It has a tendency of moving and it makes it very difficult at that high magnification uh, to be able to focus really well with it. So I'm not sure how you're supposed to combat that because you can't just pick up the entire microscope and hold it in your hand because, well, the slide would be falling all over the place and it just makes it very difficult. So you see on the very bottom of that, I get a black shadow occasionally. That's because the phone is shifting around in the phone mount. Like I said, that phone mount could be probably a little bit stiffer of a spring. I do have, I did have issues trying to, uh, trying to take pictures. But you can see, um, and you'll see with the very last one too, that uh, this is not at all the type of image that was portrayed in the advertising. Um, the image here, it's uh, uh, not very clear. It's very hard to focus. Um, the slides are very hard to keep steady. They slide all over the place, um, and it's it's just very hard to uh, to focus, stay in focus, and uh, and move the slides where you want. Because anytime you just barely touch the microscope, the slide will shift to the left or shift to the right and make it very very difficult. So this is the pollen grains off of a I believe a dandelion or a small weed that was just growing outside. And I decided I was just going to raid its privacy and. Uh, and uh, pull off some of the pollen from the anthers. And so you can see those there are quite pretty. You can see fairly good detail with this microscope at 250X. Um, not bad, honestly, for $15. Uh, now, is this, is, this a, is this a Leica microscope? Is this a Zeiss quality? No, absolutely not. You're not gonna get that good of quality. Um, but uh, what, I, what I bought this for was to be able to go out and see if there were some things interesting enough that I wanted to take home for me to where I could use it on my Leica microscope and hook it up and, uh, and then from there take further imaging and, and uh, what needs be. So for the purpose of what I bought it for, this does very well. So now we're looking at the uh, onion root tip once I can find where in the world it is. It's very difficult to find the uh, specimen. And once you do get the specimen in your field of view, you'll notice the field of view on the low magnification is very, very small. Um, and of course, I have a lot of issues with trying to get this larger slide to balance onto the uh, stage, uh, I guess, improvised stage. It's a very small stage. And uh, you've seen I'm having issues with that orange dot. I'm having to hold the phone and the microscope uh, at the same time, while trying to manipulate the slide, it, it is a little bit tricky uh, trying to get everything to work just right. It is possible, but uh, it's, uh, it's not preferred. So here we're zooming in on that onion root tip. So now we're at 250 times magnification. And you can see the cells. You can see the nuclei and the individual cell walls very faintly. Uh, like I said, this is not a, a Zeiss or an Olympus microscope, but... Uh, it it does well for the cost, which is insanely low of just $15. And the case itself is only $11, I believe. So with the total package, I'm only paying 26 after taxes, maybe eh, just round it to $30. And uh, you can see fairly, fairly good detail uh, for that cost of microscope. So yeah, so um, 
so that's the microscope. There's that base wobble that I was talking about. That's why it's very hard to stay in focus. It keeps shifting in and out of focus because that base will wobble. And you can see that whenever it's setting down, the microscope itself will still pivot on that base and just throw you completely in and out of focus. So it makes it very difficult to, uh, to see the, the very small details with that uh, consistently. But uh, yeah, so so that's the uh, the that's that's the microscope. The the foam clip on the top there, like I said, it could be stronger, um, but they are using plastic components, uh, so it it can't be too strong, or else it'll break the foam clip. So they kind of work it with what they have. <clears throat> the ultraviolet light, I'm not sure what that's for. It's not able to be used while the stage is down, so you can't use it for any sort of uh, fluorescent specimens or anything like that. So I'm not quite sure what the ultraviolet light is there for. Maybe if you see, have some uh, fluorescent microorganisms uh, that you could shine on, but you, you wouldn't be able to see them through the microscope because when the, when the, slide, is, when the slide stage is in the position to view slides, uh, the UV is not able to be used. So overall, not a bad purchase for $15. Uh, it's a very good microscope. I forgot to show this in the unboxing at the very beginning of the video, uh, but this was a, a slide and a cover slip that, uh, that I forgot that I didn't see in the box once I tilted the box over. These came falling out. So it's very cheap, very small plastic slide and a opaque cover slip. I'm not sure why they would do that. I didn't know whether or not there was a uh, some sort of tape or some sort of protecting material on the cover slip, and it appears to 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 not be anything there. I guess that just is the color of the color slip, which doesn't make much sense at all because you will see in a second that the slide is very clear. You can see uh, any sort of microorganisms or any sort of plant life perfectly through the slide. And once you put the cover slip on, it just, uh, you'll see right here, it just completely blocks all, all clarity. So I don't think that you would be able to actually see a microorganism through that cover slip. Nonetheless, uh, it's not bad. You know, if you have your own slides and you have your own cover slips uh, uh, and you have that case, you have a place where you can put your slides and cover slips. Uh, so it wouldn't be it wouldn't be that uh, bad of a deal. Or if you just do what I do, I just take some tape uh, and put the organism, whatever organism I'm dealing with, whether it be uh, mainly for dry organisms, um, and not dry organisms, but for like pollen and uh, small uh, specimens, just tape them onto the microscope. Now for living organisms, obviously that might not work well with tape if you're doing a wet mount, if you want to look at pond water. Um, but nonetheless, it uh, seems, uh, seems to be a fairly good deal. So this is the instruction booklet. This also came in there. It shows you that we, you know, we did indeed did do the correct steps to try to maximize the image quality. Uh, we still did not get that good of image quality, though. So that's the, uh, that's the review for the microscope and the, the case itself. Uh, I'll just go ahead and throw in the case while we're reviewing it. You can see I'm putting everything up in there. This case was made specifically for this microscope. Um, it's, uh, it's on Amazon. It's about $11. I'll link it in the description. But uh, it holds the microscope securely. The only beef I have with it is so hard to pull out that divider. Um, that divider, it's just... You see, I have to use it tweezers just to pull it out because it's very, very difficult. So as far as the zippered portion goes, you can see there at the very, very top might be some issues with quality control. Zipper seems to be separating already brand new. I just got this thing in today, actually, or maybe yesterday. So, But it's a pretty good size case. Holds my tweezers, the pipette. Uh, I completely missed that because I was <laughs> looking at the camera while I was trying to put the pipette in. So... <clears throat> and the slides fits plenty of slides in there and the uh, clip the foam clip will fit in there too so I'm throwing in that little plastic it's a very very cheap plastic slide I'll probably end up just carrying glass slides around with we with me and either tape or plastic cover slips um, 
but uh, I, I really don't like that cover slip. I also keep a little um, razor blade in there just in case I want to try to make cuts of plant stems or plant roots to try to see the internal structures of them. So I also keep a razor blade in there. And I keep a little specimen jar, but that's kept in my backpack. That does not unfortunately fit inside there because the specimen jar that I have is too large. I could get a smaller one and I could probably get it to fit inside, but uh, all in all a good deal. So thank you guys and, uh, and we'll be with you next time.